Stab. Zane. Zane Miller. Stab him. Okay. Stab him. Did you ever watch Dan Lapitar whenever his dad would introduce the stat of the day and his dad's singing with that heavy Cuban accent? His dad's going, stat of the day, stat of the day. We don't do that, though. This episode is sponsored by UPMC Altoona Elite Orthopedics. UPMC Altoona Elite Orthopedics and the UPMC Sports Medicine Concussion Program are proud to support youth sports across our region and proud to sponsor the high school football preview show on the Mirror TV YouTube channel. To learn more about their board-certified orthopedic surgeons, their specially trained concussion management experts, and the wide range of orthopedic conditions they treat, visit upmcaltuna.com slash ortho. To schedule an appointment in one of their offices in Hollidaysburg, Ebensburg, or Bedford, call 814-889-3600. That's Hello again, everybody, and welcome to week seven of the high school football preview show on Mirror TV on YouTube. Uh, I am joined again by our big time high school football B writer who goes everywhere in central Pennsylvania and even farther, Mike Boynton. I'm your host, Scott Franco, and you're probably going to wonder what this is, but we're not going to do that just yet, right? Are we okay. going to do it right off the bat? Yeah. We're going to do it. We thought we wouldn't get people guessing. We got another hat. We're very excited to add to our list here and everything. Mike's going to tell the story of that. But uh, drum roll, please, here. I know the drum roll's playing right now. And this is our hat for the new week. We're very appreciative of this hat. Cambria Heights. So I, was, I covered uh, Cambria Heights this week at uh, Marion Center, and I was honestly ready to just give up. I was, I was thinking that... I was ready again, to go steal a hat from someone. Once again, we were going to go a week with no hat, and... I was actually getting ready to walk to Marion Center's Booster Club area and buy a Marion Center beanie for $5. Yeah, for old people, those are tassel caps, which gives Mike and I an idea for next year where we might collect beanies or tassel caps if people still make those. But I just thought maybe I'll buy this and it'll inspire some of our actual schools to come through. But as I started walking toward that Booster Club, Renee Miller tossed me this beautiful Cambry Heights hat, the mother of Zane Miller, who actually had a sack later in the game for Cambria Heights, and uh, we really appreciate it. It helps uh, fill out the group, but I still feel like there's more room for more. More hats, El Tuna, Central. About I can't believe we don't have Central. I do. I'm going to steal a hat next week if I don't get one. I know it doesn't, that we do not encourage stealing here at the El Tuna Mirror Sports Department. But if that's what I have to do to get one, that's what I might do. Actually, Mike likes the Cambria Heights hat so much. He's actually, I think, asking, can he have... I went to Bellwood one at the end of the year. And I know, please, Tyrone, people don't send any hate mail. But I really, I think I look nice, and I want to wear that when the season's over. But anyways, uh, two hats we don't have, but we're going to talk about this game first. It's the big game Friday night, 6-0 Bedford at 6-0 Central. I believe you have this game. I, will. Uh, I, I mean... Who do you pick in this one? If it was at Bedford, I might have picked Bedford. I took Central. Well, it's going to be a rematch of last year in the state playoffs. The teams actually played, and Central lost 28-13. to But that was without Jeff Owenstein, who got hurt in the district championship game. He's going to be healthy for this one, and he is having an excellent season. Mercury Swaim's having an excellent season. There's so many players that have stood out for Bedford and Central. And it's just really exciting that they're going to be able to play this game. And uh, this might not be the only time they play this year. Because while this one's going to probably decide the Laurel Highlands Conference, they may end up playing in the state playoffs again if Bedford can get past Clearfield, another 6-0 team. 
uh, in their sub-regional. Now, uh, last year, obviously, like I said, Hohenstein wasn't there. This year, he's been there, and he has plenty of targets. Mercury Swaim has uh, found Kevin Ressler that he's gotten real comfortable with, and uh, Bedford has gotten big plays from its defense, its special teams, and both of these teams have handled their business to this point, and it'll be really interesting to see what happens. I mean, obviously, we keep saying Central's going to be tested by Penn Cambria, Central's going to be tested by Richland. Well, they've passed those tests with flying colors, and now here comes the biggest one. And i got to think that of all the teams they've played, Bedford seems like the one offense that might be able to match them point for point. That's why I'm curious. If Central holds this team the way they've had again, we don't talk about Central's defense enough, but they've, they've done the job. I and mean, A lot of those kids are playing two ways, too, but I just think that's the game. If I could have a game and I wasn't covering a game Friday night, this is the game I'd want to go to. Uh, our second game we want to look at is uh, El Tuna on the road, and they're in the middle of a losing streak here, 3-3, three and three, going to a 2-4 and four Chambersburg team. Uh, how good is Chambersburg? Well, Chambersburg has struggled this year, but uh, Altoona needs this win because they need to get back on track. Uh, Vince told me that they need to get back to basics, back to fundamentals, tackling, and uh, it's it's really confusing because I I, I wrote in the preview for Holidaysburg and Altoona uh, that was in Thursday's paper that if these two teams could combine Holidaysburg and Altoona, they would have had a great season so far because Holidaysburg has started slow and Altoona has started really well. So Altoona's played really well in the first half. They were a yard away from playing even with Harrisburg in the first half, but then they fell apart in the point. second half. And, you know, obviously we know Holidaysburg has played really well in the second half of games. So... Altoona needs to find a way to keep it going, and maybe they can start on that this week against Chambersburg. Our next game, Mike's talking about Hollisburg. That's the game that I'm going to. Hollisburg 2-3 and three, has not played in two weeks, going to a really good 5-0 and o McDowell team. And you always wonder, does McDowell ever have a down year? I, I was told in the last couple of years they were going to have down years, and they still win a lot of games. And this is a four-hour bus ride. I know Hollisburg's going up early. But this is a really, really tall task, especially for a team that does not start well. Teams that get off the bus and look tired, that's kind of like a big, ugh. I, I don't even, I'm afraid uh, of this game. Like, I'm afraid of this game, and I'm not even playing in it. Well, first of all, I'm not sure how slow you're driving to make it. It's four hours. I, I it's think it's four around three hours, hours and three 15 Three hours? Minutes. Who drives that fast? Um, I, I take two hours to get to Pittsburgh. Well, that's not bad. Okay. Then, uh, anyway, so they, the Holidaysburg, it, it, it's like we talked about. They need to get off to a hot start, and that's going to be tough um, traveling so long. But I talked to Coach Delatre. He said they're going to stop in Meadville and get a, a dinner beforehand, and hopefully, you know, that helps break up the trip a little bit. And they have the talent. That's what's so frustrating to, to, to Coach Delatre is they've shown that they can hang with the top-tier teams that they're going to play, but they just haven't done it for a full game. And maybe this is the game where they put everything together. They've had two weeks to work on it. See, I keep thinking a team like this, maybe McDowell sees that Hollisburg's two wins are over two teams that are combined one in, I think, what, one in Belfont's one in five, Mifflin County's 0-6. Because I just think sometimes you play down to your competition or you play up to your competition because Hollisburg needs any edge they can get. Uh, speaking of edge here, Bishop Guilfoyle on a mini win streak here, I believe. And they're playing at Chestnut Ridge. BG's 4-2, and two, Ridge is 3-3. Three and three. And I know several Mirror Sports writers took Chestnut Ridge, including this BG alum, just because I'm far behind. I need to catch up to guys like Mike, John, and Buck. But Chestnut Ridge, they have a chance in this game? Well, they have a chance. Uh, they don't have Logan Fister anymore. Obviously, he's graduated, but Nate Wysong has stepped in. He's done a really good job. Matt Wysong is as good as anybody in the state. Um, but BG has really started to stop the run a little bit better, and that's what Coach Wheeler's been the happiest about because that when they were struggling against Forest Hills, Penn Cambria early in the season, they were giving up a ton of yards on the ground. 
But last week I asked him, who were you most impressed with in your win? And he told me that it was the defensive line. The guys have really stepped up on the defensive line against Westmont, and he was really happy with that. Uh, I think a... Uh, a cool no name, um, alumni of oh, Bombachi. So Sante! Yeah. Sante Bombachi. Uh, and uh, so he's really been impressed with those guys. And if those guys step up and stop Chestnut Ridge from running the ball, I think BG is going to win and I'm going to get even further ahead of you. Yeah. Now, BG, uh, Chestnut Ridge, does their quarterback run a lot? Because isn't Harold the he last person? Run. Harold's the last person to really run on yeah. BG in that Saturday game, so that's why I was curious if but Chestnut Ridge Somerset's run Somerset's quarterback is also running quarterback, quarterback and, they, and they were able to handle so it. Be, uh, speaking of the Penn Cambria, we just did it and say Penn Cambria is our next game, five and one, hosting Richland four and two. And even though this game is at Penn Cambria and they have a better record, I'm pretty sure I picked Richland just because I don't know. It just makes me nervous because Richland's just really good, but. Uh, uh, Penn Cambria, I, I get to think you think they have a very decent chance to win this game. Hey, Penn Cambria, nobody, we, we, nobody here gave them a uh, chance to beat BG. They did that. Yeah, yes, they did. They um, looked impressive in every game this season, including you know com overcoming a little bit of a slow start last week against Central Cambria in the rivalry game, and then handling them. And this week, it's going to be tough. But hey, you know we didn't give them any. Uh, chance to beat BG, and they did, they can beat Richland, uh, it's possible, and if they do, that's going to be a huge statement, and it's going to be a statement that, hey, you know, we know we're going to have to play Central Again. if we want to win a district championship. Yeah. Central just beat Richland by a lopsided yeah. margin, so Van Cambry needs to show that they can compete with teams like this, and this has got to be a team that they you know, are able to defeat if they're going to continue to show improvement and get to that level. And your stat here, because Mike always has really good stat, Richland hasn't lost more than two games since the 2017 season, and that's why I keep thinking, okay, Richland lost their two games, so that's it. That's why I can't see, that's why I picked Richland, but uh, maybe I'll be apologizing to the Panthers next week. Our quick hit segment here now, real quick. We're going to go through Northern Bedford 3-3 three and three at Junietta Valley 5-0. and oh. Northern Bedford on a nice little roll there after starting, with, to use the word of the, of the fall, gauntlet. Northern Bedford now, but Junior had a value. I saw Junior had a value last week. They're really good. Yeah, yeah, and it certainly didn't make it any easier on the teams in the ICC when the Williamsburg players joined in there and Lambert Palmer became their quarterback. That was kind of the missing piece that Junior had a value needed. But um, it's going to be interesting to see how Northern Bedford has, has come along after their... Uh, tough slate at the beginning of the season. Uh, now they've got some confidence, and we'll see if they're able to hang with Juniata Valley. Uh, our other quick hit, Portage. Uh, couldn't find a game this week, though. I Technically, I wanted to know if Portage could have played Hollisburg, so we wouldn't have to go to Erie, but that was not going to happen. Uh, Portage couldn't find a game, but they got two big games coming up here soon. Yeah, they have to play Winber and Berlin, uh, the two toughest teams. And right now they're at the top of Class 1, 1A in District 6. But they're going to have a tough time holding on to that position and holding off Juniata Valley because those are two tough games and they're not going to get any points this week from not having a game. But then how about our stat of the week, which is like three lines on this paper, Mike. Yeah, that's how I know this is a big stat of the week. What is our stat of the week? Well, in our stat leaders that we run in Thursday's paper, there's 22 kids that have caught at least 10 passes. And five of those are from Central. What? You got Hunter Smith. Eli Lingenfelder, Devin Boyles, Parker Gregg, and Ethan Eicher. And all of those kids have caught at least 10 passes. That just goes to show you how many weapons Jeff Hohenstein has and how he can spread the ball around. And the impressive thing about Hunter Smith, he's a fullback. So that means they're not only like throwing to the ball downfield to like uh, Devin Boyles and those guys, but Hunter Smith is a fullback. And he's like, like he's a college in NFL. You don't really throw a lot to your backfield. But Central is doing that. That's what makes them impressive. And now, the one thing uh, before we get to our cool name segment that Mike, Mike's going to show us discuss, but after, I just wanted to point out one thing. Last week I did, I got to cover Claysburg, Kimmel, Junior the Valley, and I had two observations from that. Junior the Valley won that game easily. Junior the Valley in the second half, Coach Musser was up big at halftime. He left his JVs in the whole time. Even though Claysburg, Kimmel, they left their starters in the third quarter, I think, because they wanted to have them experience some success. They scored two touchdowns. 
Monster kept his JVs, and he had a great comment. His comment was, when I asked him, he said, you know what, those guys bust their butt all week long in practice, and they're very competitive practices. He said, they deserve a reward on Friday night, and I did, because I've covered football since 1985. I've been at games where coaches have panicked and put their starters back in. I love that he didn't do that. And another thing afterwards, throughout the whole game, Claysburg Kimmel was getting, like, you know, pancakes sometimes, and they didn't get feisty. You know, even the second half, if they blocked the Junior High Valley kid to the ground, they were helping him up. I just and then afterwards, when I was looking for Coach Vilchak, these guys just got dusted, like forty-two to eighteen. They'd come up and go, "Oh, Mr. Franco, can I help you? Where can I shape?" So I just thought that was worth. You know, we always joke around here a lot and stuff like this, but I was very impressed with those two aspects of those two teams. And hey, he was just saying all that nice stuff about Claysburg Kimmel. I think he's probably trying to suck up, so you said oh, a hat. We don't have a hat. Maybe the boys' basketball coach at Claysburg Kimmel, if somebody could reach out to him, maybe he could find somebody in the football department to give us a hat. But real quick, our cool name segment before we say goodbye to everybody. I wanna know what's the name of the game? Actually, one of them is from Claysburg Kimmel. He's one of the young men who uh, helped me find Coach Bilchak, Zeke Barr. Zeke Barr, that just sounds like a six foot two, 275 pound two way lineman, which is what Zeke is. And my other name, and it's not because we got a Cambria Heights hat, I just was scanning the rosters. This kid's only a sophomore, but someday I just think this is a great headline. His name is Shane Kane. Shane Kane, he's a wide receiver cornerback from Cambria Heights, only 10th grade, like I said, Zeke's a senior. But anyways, we got to put goalposts. If somebody wants to make us some plastic goalposts, we can bring them in, and Mike can actually shoot that while we're doing that. But that'll be it for week seven, correct? Week seven is uh, it's in the books now, so make sure you hit like on that and tell your friends about it and then share it on Facebook so we get more likes and uh, we can get more hats sent to us. But for Mike Boydham, for our director, producer, special effects man, Dan Eisenberg, I'm Scott Franco. Thanks for watching, guys.